All right, so keep your Bibles open there in uh, Proverbs chapter 4. As Michael was reading that, let's just read the first verse very quickly. It says, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. So what's being taught here is that children ought to listen to their fathers. And, you know, if we keep going on, we'll soon see the mother is spoken of as well. And it is the parent's responsibility. You know, we've been given children, parents, or those that have children. We've been given children to pass on understanding, to pass on knowledge, to pass on a good education. And we've been going through, uh, well, I took a little break uh, last time I preached, but we've been going through the series on the family, you know, the family series. And I'm somebody with my wife, we, with our 10 children, we homeschool our children. You know, we've got six kids in, in, that have been homeschooled right now. You know, it's not an easy job, you know, you know, having six kids, you think, well, that, that's not too many kids. That's right, there's not too many kids, but they're all at different ages, they're all at different levels, and that's where it starts to become complicated, that's where it starts to become a little difficult, homeschooling. Now, I, I want to preach on homeschooling, and the title for the sermon tonight is, Homeschooling is Biblical. Homeschooling is Biblical. Now, what I want to start off by saying is a couple of things. You know, when you preach a, a sermon like this, especially to parents, it's easy to get offended sometimes because, you know, not everybody in this church homeschools their kids. Now, some of you do, some of you don't homeschool your kids. Now, by the end of this sermon, if you, if you decide, well, you know what, homeschooling is just not for us, it's not something that I, I truly believe in, you know, I'm happy for my children to be in the, in the regular school system, well, that's your decision. That's your call. You know, you as a parent have been uh, given the privilege, the honor, the responsibility to teach your kids the way you have. But I want to talk about homeschooling a little bit because, you know, most churches will not preach about homeschooling. Now, a lot of, lot of Christians, a lot of Christian people actually do homeschool their kids, but they don't really have a good biblical reason why they do it. They know there's a lot of benefits to it, but they don't really know what the Bible says about this topic. So I, I want to basically give you a biblical foundation as to why I believe homeschooling is the most biblical method for you to educate your children. Now, before you say there in Proverbs chapter 4, uh, I'll just read to you from Deuteronomy chapter 11, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 19. I'll just read it to you quickly. It says, And ye, speaking to the parents, and ye shall teach them your children. Speaking of them, speaking of the words of God, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. The Bible is very clear that parents are instructed to be the teachers of their children. And of course, when, when God's speaking about here, He's not speaking about the math curriculum here, right? He's not necessarily speaking about the science curriculum, the history curriculum, you know, the geography curriculum. No, when He talks about, you know, uh, speaking to them when you sit in your house, when you walk, when you lie down, when you go to sleep, when you rise up. What, what the Bible is telling us is that, that um, God has given us all areas of life, all times of life, to educate our kids. It's not just this curriculum. It's not just a subject. You know, we ought to be teaching our children the Word of God. We ought to be teaching our children the ways of the Lord, how to walk in His ways. We need to be teaching our children to be street smart so they wouldn't be deceived, they wouldn't be taken advantage of in this world. We should be teaching our kids how to change tires. You know, how to change the car oil or something, you know, just the little things that we can do. You know, teaching our children about finances, about money, you know, the value of money, getting them to work, getting them to do chores, maybe, maybe giving them a little pocket money so they learn, you know, what it means to, to have money, teaching them how to give a little bit of that to the church, to the local church. You know, teaching our kids in all areas of life how to be good people, how to have good character. How to, how, to, how to say please, how to say thank you, how to respect, you know, the authorities that they have in their life. You know, teaching kids is not just a subject. But when it comes to schools, at least when I was in school, it was all about the subjects. It was, have you passed the exam? Have you passed the test? But you know what? I mean, come on, adults, you know this is too, too true. Uh, how much of schooling do you think really plays an active role with your daily life today? How much of all the things that you learnt about history and geography, unless you're maybe a travel agent or something, but you know, not much, right? There's not much. Now, I'm not saying it's worthless. It, I'm not saying it's worthless whatsoever. I do believe those subjects are important. It exercises the mind. You know, the brain is a muscle and you need to keep, you know, if you're working out, if you want to try to get, you know, some big biceps, you've got to keep working that muscle. If you stop working out, it's, it flops, right? It just turns into fat. Hey, the brain's the same thing. You've got to keep exercising the mind. You know, after you retire, you need to keep learning. You need to keep exercising that mind or you start to deteriorate mentally. 
You know, children need to have their minds exercised as they grow and they mature. The Bible makes it very clear, though, it is the responsibility given to the parents. Now, let me keep reading a few other passages to you before we look at Proverbs chapter 4. It says in Ephesians 6, 4, And ye fathers, fathers, they say, well, hold on, I'm, I'm going to work. I'm at work eight hours a day. I'm at work 10 hours, 12 hours a day. The Bible says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You see, it doesn't matter how many hours you work, God has told the fathers, you're accountable for your kids. You need to raise them up in the nurture. You need to nurture them and admonish them. That's correct them in the Lord. Ephesians 5.23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour. Of the body. You see, many times when, when parents are homeschooling, usually, you know, the father's out at work, mother's at home teaching the kids. And it's easy for the father to say, well, you know, I'll leave that to the wife. I'll leave that to the mother. Well, the Bible says, you know, husband, you are the head of the wife. You need to be involved in what's going on with your children's education. You need to be involved with how your children are growing up and, and learning things. And I know it's very uh, easy to leave that in the hands of the mother, but God makes it very clear that fathers, you are the head of your house. You, you ought to be the principal, as it were, of, 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 that, of the teaching that your children are being received. I'm going to read to you from Joel chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Hear this, ye old men. Old men. What's the old man being instructed to do? And give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it. And let your children tell their children and their children another generation. You see, it's not just a father's responsibility to teach their kids. Grandparents, old men, you're instructed to pass it down to the children's children and so on, generation after generation. And if you look at Proverbs chapter 4 there again, once again, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1, it says, Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father. Who's passing instruction? The father. And attend to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Now we think about doctrine as a, 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 a church, churchy word, right? A religious word. Doctrine just means teaching, okay? It says, look, I give you good teaching. Who do you think is going to give your children the best teaching? The good teaching. You think it's some teacher in the, in the school who doesn't care a thing about your kids? Or is it going to be mums and dads who love the, the children, who's been there from the beginning? Good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Look at verse number three. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also. He says, look, I'm teaching you, child. But guess what? My father taught me also, right? He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live keep my commandments and live so as we're going through these passages it's about teaching your children okay and i know we've been brainwashed into thinking well those subjects are for school churchy stuff that's for the pastor to teach my kids and i'll teach my kids anything else no no, no. when the bible speaks of teaching your kids it's all of the above it's all of it. The Bible doesn't break it down like this, okay? It's about raising your kids. And I'll just quickly read to you from Genesis 18, verse 19. Genesis 18, verse 19. These are words that God said of Abraham, the father of the faith. He says in Genesis 18, verse 19, For I know him, he says, I know Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. You know why God selected Abraham to give the promises of, the, of Jesus Christ? He says, I know Abraham. I know him very well. And he's going to command his children, his whole household, his servants to walk in my ways, to command his family. And so who is accountable for the family? Who is accountable for the learning of the children? You know who's accounting, accountable? Dads, the fathers. You're the head of your house. Accountable. Now listen, there is a difference between accountability and responsibility, okay? Now, when I was managing a large team, I was accountable for whatever happened. If things went well, I'd take credit for it. If things went bad, I had to own, own it, right? I'm accountable for what's happening. But does that mean I'm responsible for every little job that's being done in the business? No. That's when you delegate the responsibilities. You have other people doing the job, but even though others are responsible for completing the job, I'm still accountable as the manager, as the head, to make sure the job's being done, right? And if it's not being done, it's on me. It's on me. 
And so when it comes to accountability and responsibility, one thing we need to understand if you're a homeschooling uh, family is that fathers, you need to leave the responsibility because usually mums are at home. Usually mums are the ones raising the children. You need to give the responsibility, the trust, the assurance, the confidence to your wife, to the mothers to raise their children. But you're still accountable. You're still accountable. If the kids are not learning, you've got to step in. If your wife needs support, she needs whatever she needs from you to be able to accomplish that task, Fathers, you need to be there to be that rock, to be that uh, anchor for your wife to be able to accomplish the homeschooling. Because again, homeschooling is not always easy. It looks nice. It looks rosy on the outside. But let me tell you, there's several tears during the week, all the time. There's always some difficulty. I mean, a new baby's born. All of a sudden, your routine's out of, out of whack, right? The kids learned something last week, and then they can't remember what it was the next week. I mean, it just looks, you know, there's always these frustrations that go on, okay? I'm not saying we're a perfect family. There's tears in my family, right? There's, there's, there's frustration sometimes. But here's the thing that I know. I know that my kids are getting a better education, even if it's only two solid hours, two good solid hours at home than the six hours they would have got in school. No doubt. Guaranteed, they're getting a better education, all right? So the Bible says in Proverbs, you guys in Proverbs, go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. You see, both fathers, yes, they're accountable, but also the mother is the one who's giving laws, who's giving instruction, who's giving direction to the children. All right? And uh, let me just read some other passages to you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3, verse 15. I'll just read it to you quickly. Who was Timothy? You know, the, the, the epistle of Timothy, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy were written by Paul the Apostle to Timothy, a pastor. And, and Timothy was a young man, all right? But the Bible says, or Paul says about Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which were able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul the Apostle looked at Timothy and says, Man, you're well educated. You've been educated since a child. But not, you know, here specifically, you've been educated in the scriptures. You've been educated in the faith. But when we look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, Paul uh, knows why, why that is. He says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. He says, Timothy, I know why you're educated. I know why, you're so, why you know so much about the scriptures. I know why you're strong in the faith. Because of your grandmother and because of your mother. That education was passed on generation after generation. So it's not just the fathers, but the mothers need to get involved in the education of their children. And of course, Proverbs 31 verse 1, the Bible says, The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What an amazing thing that in Proverbs 31, we have the prophecy that was from a mother to King Lemuel. I believe that's King Solomon that's been referred to there. Okay, so my point there was basically mums and dads, you're both responsible for the teaching, the rearing of your children. But dads, you're accountable. And then you give that responsibility to your wife. You give the responsibility to their mothers. So I'm, I'm all for homeschooling. Okay, now, why do you homeschool Pastor Kevin? Is it because you heard a sermon? Is it because you read the Bible and you went, you know what happened? I was, uh, I was dating Christina. I, wasn't even, I don't think I was even engaged. I don't think I was even engaged. And I was, I was just driving home from church and I was listening to talkback radio. And there was this American, uh, ex-American pr uh, principal of a school. And he was coming to Australia to do some homeschooling sessions. And he was promoting homeschooling. He goes, look, I've been, I've been a, a principal for, for whatever decades at, at, at the standard school system. And he goes, he was actually against homeschoolers at one point. Okay? And he tried to disprove homeschooling, try to say that these kids are getting a bad education. They're not socializing, these kinds of things. And then when he did his research, he found out, man, these kids, they're above and beyond. I mean, they're, they're top of the class. And he, he started to change his stance. And now he goes throughout, throughout countries teaching about the benefits of homeschooling. And I was listening to that, and I just remember, man, I didn't like my schooling experience. I didn't like my public school. There was too much pressure. There was too much people trying to cause you to sin, to, to, to you know, take drugs or, or you know, sleep around, all these kinds of things. But then it wasn't just a public school that I went to. I went to a Christian school for year seven, from high school. It was worse. 
<laughs> it was worse. And I'm thinking, man, I, look, and, and I know my, my parents meant well, of course, right? It was, like, it was like a Christian Baptist school. They meant well. I'm sure they invested, you know, several thousands of dollars to put me through that school system. But it was worse because the same issues, the same pressures were in that same school system. And then Christina, she grew up a Roman Catholic. She went to private school as well, but to the, to the Catholic private school. And she's telling me about all the, all the wickedness that was going on in, in her school. And uh, I just listened to her. I said, man, if I get married and have kids, they're getting homeschooled. I don't care what it's going to take. They're getting homeschooled. And thank God he put me in a, in a church. I was Victory Baptist Church. There were several homeschooling mothers there. So it's a bit awkward when you start homeschooling because there's a lot of pressures against you. Like, come on, like, what are you doing? Like, they think you're abusing your kids or something. But when you get to a church where there's several homeschooling mothers, then you're encouraged. You can support one another. And you can see, you know, eye to eye with, with certain people. Now, I'm all for homeschooling. But I, there's something that I, I don't like about homeschooling families. And I'm not saying everyone's like this. I'm just saying I've come across people that are like this. And that's the hypocrisy that I see with homeschooling parents. Okay? And what I mean by this is, look, again, I believe that every parent, all the parents have accountability, responsibility for their own children. Okay? I'm all for homeschooling. But if you decide to, to educate your, your kids in the school system, that's your decision. I don't have to go to you and make you feel bad. I don't have to tell you about how bad of a parent you are or anything like that. But that's what happens. Right? That's what happens in churches. You know, people are homeschooling. They think they're, they're, they're amazing. They find out another family is not homeschooling. They find out another family is just uh, raising their kids in the school system. And they'll say things like this to hurt them. Oh, I would never put my kids, you know, I, I would never let another, any, another person train my kids. Oh, I would never put my kids, uh, let my kids learn from an unsafe person or, or whatever. And I, and I hear that and I know, I know what they're trying to do. It's not that they're promoting homeschooling. It's not that they care about that person. It's they're trying to put that family down. They're trying to make them feel horrible. But then there's a hypocrisy to that. Because just about every homeschooling family I know does take their kids and, put them, and put them edu get them educated by someone else. I did that. Say so how? Well, when my kids needed piano practice, when they needed to learn piano, you know, what did I do? I took them to a piano teacher. All right, we took them every week to a piano teacher. I put them in another under the authority of someone else. Guess what? What else? You know, my kids, when I wanted them to learn swimming, they had to swim so they wouldn't drown, right? I looked at, you know, what do we do? We, we took them to the local pools. We found a, a teacher there and they got teaching how to swim. That was an unsafe person, most likely, that was teaching them how to swim. All right. Now, there's, there's other activities. You know, as your kids grow up, you know, let's say your child wants to be an electrician or something. Then that child will probably get an apprenticeship. And guess what? Now they're being trained by somebody else, somebody that's been an electrician for several years. And so homeschooling families are always putting their kids in other activities and learning other things, and then they're bagging out other parents for putting them in the school system. And you're saying, are you, are you for the school system? No, I'm not. No, not at all, okay? And uh, let, let me explain to you what, what this issue is, because, you know, think about this. You know, like I said, let, let's say, uh, you know, we're driving the, the, the kids to the piano teacher, and then we're driving the kids to uh, the swim lessons, and then we're driving the kids to... You know, we've we got a small backyard um, right now in Queensland, so I, I've taken them to so, uh, soccer lessons so they can at least run around, the boys get some activity, get some strength about themselves. But what if all these teachers were in just one building? What if we said, you know, what about math? You know, how many of you, I know a lot of homeschooling parents that have used math tutors. You know, they, they have other people helping them to teach their kids mathematics. What if we got the math tutor in that building? What if we got the science teacher in that building? Oh, we want to teach our kids geography. Let's get someone that knows geography really well in history. Let's put them into that building. You know, we start adding all these people to the building. You can see now what I'm talking about, right? And that's essentially the school system. That's how these things happen, right? Eventually, it's like, well, instead of taking people, children here, there, and everywhere, let's just get that one building, get all these teachers to get in there and to teach our kids. So theoretically, theoretically, is there anything wrong with the school system? Theoretically, is there anything wrong with putting people under uh, being taught by other people, uh, things being taught by other people. I'd say theoretically, there's nothing wrong with it. But here's the thing. Not everything that works theoretically works practically. Okay? There's a lot of things like that. I mean, communism is a great example. You know, supposedly, theoretically, it works. But once it's put into practice, it just destroys the nation, right? There's a lot of things in life that seem legitimate, seem like this can work, but as soon as you put it into practice, it falls apart. What's the problem with the school system? What, you know, well, here's the thing. Once again, who's accountable? Who's responsible for those children? Who's been instructed to teach those kids? It's mums and dads, right? Now, here's the thing. When you put them in the school system, that responsibility is removed from you almost entirely. 
just about entirely. Okay, you lose the accountability. I mean, just look at our nation. You know, when I was, in, when I was full time in, in the workforce, I would hear about the school holidays, right? And I'd hear parents just whinging and complaining about the kids being home. And then, you know, when school holidays are almost over, they're like, oh man, yes, I can't wait for school holidays to be over. I say, why is that? Do you want your kids to get an education? No, 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 I just want them out of my head. I just want them out of the way. Okay, that's how the system is. It's like, get rid of the kids because I don't want them in the house. I don't want to have to put up with them. I want them gone for six, seven or eight hours, whatever it is, plus, you know, the traveling time. And, and that's what, you know, so they remove complete accountability and responsibility for their children's education. And how many parents after working long hours really have the time to sit down with the kids and say, well, show me what you did for school. Not many do that. Not many are able to do that. Not, not many parents do that. That's the problem with the school system. Theoretically, it's not the problem, the building or the people in there. It's that it, it takes away the accountability and responsibility that God has given the parents and you're giving it now to somebody else. Okay, you're giving it to other people. Now, here's the thing. I was in, uh, now, before I get there, you all know that the school system, the, 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 the curriculum in the schools are ungodly. You know that, man, they're, they're becoming totally anti-biblical. You know they're promoting the homosexual agenda. You know, they're, they're promoting all these things. You know, they're telling children, well, are you, sure, are you sure you like boys? Are you sure you like girls? Maybe you need to, you know, experiment and find out what you really like. I mean, these things are coming out of our school system, right? I mean, it's, it's horrible. It was bad when I was in school. It's worse today. It's getting worse, all right? Now, here's the thing. You don't have control over what your children are learning in that school system. All right? Now, here's the thing with the tutor. If you don't like the math tutor you have, you get rid of him. You get a new math tutor. You know? When you're homeschooling, you've got a textbook, you don't like a few of those chapters, you go, well, that's a waste of time, or that's about, that's about pagan gods. I don't want my kids to learn about that. What do you do? You rip out the page. You rip out the chapter. You go, well, you know, we're not going to cover that. We'll move on. That's the advantage of homeschooling, is that even though you might have some of the same material, you as a parent have the decision, you, you are able to make those decisions as to what you're teaching your kids. Because God has given you that instruction, has given you that authority to do it. In the school system, you lose it all. In fact, you're probably not even aware when your kids are being taught wicked things until they get home and tell you what they learnt. Okay, until they, and, and man, they're learning some really weird things these days. Okay, but here's the thing. You as a parent in the school system will feel like, well, I'm going to complain about that. I'm going to go to the teacher and tell them, hey, you shouldn't be teaching the kids this thing. What's the school teacher going to say? That's not really my decision. It's, it's been decided by the school board. This is what the school board decided to teach. I have to teach it. It's my job to teach it. Then what do you do? You take it to the school board. You say, school board, listen, this is a problem. Why are you teaching the kids this stuff? Well, it's not our decision. This has been passed down from the Department of Education. This has been passed down from the government. In order for us to be recognized as a school, in order for us to get the, the financial grants that come from the government, we need to teach these things. And then you go, well, what's the next level to complain to? The government. Listen, once you complain to the government, it's a faceless, it's a faceless organization. You don't know who you're dealing with anymore. And your voice is a drop in the ocean. I mean, how many millions of kids are in the school system? And then you think your voice is going to cause them to revamp the, the education? You think your voice is going to bring, it, bring back the Bible into the schools? You think your voice is going to start teaching kids how to, you know, or, or bring, in, bring in, you know, religious teachers and, and teach them the Bible, teach them the gospel? It's not going to happen. This is the problem with the school system. This is why homeschooling is biblical. Because as parents, you still have accountability of what your children are learning. Okay? You have full control of what your children are being taught. Now, this is the fundamental issue why I homeschool my kids. These are the fundamental reasons why you as a Christian, should, can, if you're not homeschooling your kids, that you should seriously consider it, okay? Because, listen, those schools are taking your kids for a good six hours every day. Every day for how many years? 13 years, right? Kindergarten to year 12. Think about that. 13 years every day, six hours, pumping them, not just with education. I don't have a problem with the academics but with the philosophies of this world, the wickedness of this world. They're, trying, they're training them to be anti-God. They're training them to hate God. They're training them to, to believe in evolution and all these, this nonsense that is against the Bible. Right. How, look, your kids are small. They're young. They're not mature. How much do you, how much do you think they're able to you know, resist? At some point, they're going to give in. 
Okay, at some point, and this is what happens. You see godly children, you see children in school, uh, you know, of Christians, and then they're out of church. They're, they're just worldly. They're just like anybody else. And I'm not even covering, I'm not even talking about the peer pressures. You know, I'm just talking about the, the system, what the school system is teaching our children is ungodly. Let alone, like I said, the, the peer pressures, the drugs, the fornication, the abuse or the bullying that goes on in schools, the fads to keep, you know, looking cool. You know, when I was in, in, in primary school, the fad was the Reebok pumps. Anyone remember the Reebok pumps? Yeah, all right. Did you have a pair, brother? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you went cool. You went, yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to be cool in school, you had to have the Reebok pumps. You remember the pumps? And then they, anyway, you go, <laughs> maybe I'm showing my age a little bit. But the, the stupid fads, the fidget spinners, remember that? The fidget spinners, that was going on in school. I mean, just the stupid fads and, and the, the rejection. I mean, so many kids that just go through rejection, they don't, they can't connect with people. Now, here's the thing. They say schools are teaching them to socialize. But here's the thing. When I was in school, I only socialized with the people my age. I didn't socialize, I don't know about you guys, I didn't socialize with the people above my grade or under my grade or with my teachers. All I could do is socialize with people my age. That's all. I didn't learn how to socialize with adults. Now, one thing that I've seen with uh, homeschooling is if you've got a lot of children, you know, children are speaking to younger children or to older children, to parents. You know, you take them on, it, on, on trips and, and they learn things. They're more willing to ask questions from those that are teaching maybe in a museum or things like that. Hey, they, they learn how to socialize with all kinds of people. They're not thinking, I just got to stick to my peer group, my age group. That's not what they're thinking. They're thinking, man, I, I can interact with anybody. I can talk with anybody. And so the social skills are even better with homeschooling kids. Okay. And uh, the Bible tells us in, in Psalm Actually, I won't turn there just yet. But I'm just thinking, uh, the, the next thought might be this. You guys can go to Psalm 1 if you want. Psalm 1, 1, while, while I talk. Psalm 1, 1. The next thought is, well, hold on, Pastor Kevin. If, if it's not, if you don't have a problem with a building and teachers in a building teaching your kids, but you're, you have a problem with the system, well, I've got an idea. What about the Christian school? Right? Not the public school, but what about the Christian school? Right? What if all the teachers were believers? Now, that's not going to happen. But anyway, that, you know, Christian schools think they have believing teachers in their churches. What if, we, what if we just took the school system and we Christianized it? Maybe that's better. Maybe that can work now, right? Because they're not going to get all the, all the teaching. Look at Psalm 1.1. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You know, when you're putting your children in school, forget the children in school for a minute, just the regular school system, you're teaching them to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You're making them stand with the sinners, in the way of the sinners, and you're making them sit in the seat of the scornful. You're going against Psalm 1-1. As soon as you're putting, it, putting, them, putting them in the public school system, that's, what that's who their, their, their friends are. That's who their teachers are, the ungodly. Right? Then the Bible says there in verse number two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his, and his law doth he meditate day and night. Listen, your kids are not allowed to meditate in the, in the law of God, in the Bible, in schools. Okay? Where, where, where are they going to meditate in the law of God day and night? At home, with mom and dad, right? with, with, their, with, with their brothers and sisters. And, uh, but what about the school system? What about the, school, uh, the, the, the Christian school? What about the Christian school? Can that work? Can that work for uh, uh, Christians and, and children? You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah 10 too, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. The Bible says, Learn not the way of the heathen. Listen, the school system, this government system, which is ungodly, is the way of the heathen. Amen. So why are we going to take the heathen ways and say, well, let's just call it Christian? No, learn not the way of the heathen. You've got to do things differently than what the world teaches us. Okay? The, 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 the Christian school. Why would I not put my children in a Christian school? Number one, you're still doing it the heathen way. Okay? You're still doing it the heathen way. Number two, in order for Christian schools to get their... They get government kickbacks as well, the private schools. In order for them to get their government kickbacks, they've got to teach things that are ungodly. Amen. They've got to teach things that are wicked. Now, I remember this when I was, in, I was in Christian high school, I told you, right? I can't remember if it was year, year 8 maybe or year 9. We were in the science classes and there was this big uproar with all the families. And you say, why? Because the school started to teach evolution. And so the parents didn't like it, right? You put your kids in a Christian school, you think they're going to learn Christian things. 
But instead, the school started to teach evolution. You say, why did they teach evolution? Was it because they believed it? No, it's not because they, well, maybe, maybe some did. I don't know. But the reason they had to teach evolution is because the Board of Studies, the government said, in order for you to get the financial aid that you're asking from the government, you need to now teach evolution to the kids. So we would go to school, science class, and learn about evolution. What a waste of time. What a waste of time. You know, why? Just for the money? Just for money from the government? Listen, I would have been just better. You should have just said, kids, go home, right? <laughs> kids, go home and let us teach the air, right? If that's what we need to do. Just teach the air. Kids, you go home. You do something else. You go and play. You go and learn uh, other things. That's what should have happened. But look, that's what's going on in Christian schools. They're still getting the government kickbacks. In order for them to do that, they have to teach even ungodly things. Now, look, they taught evolution. The teachers taught it. But then they said, well, but we don't really believe this. Okay, but still, I mean, look, you're, you're, you're teaching people nonsense. You're teaching children nonsense. Again, young children, okay, they're not the best at discerning right and wrong. Okay, they can easily still be fooled by this teaching that is ungodly. Number three, you still, even in a Christian school, you still lose accountability for your children's education. You're still giving it to somebody else for them to basically take over your child's education. And number four, the reason I'm against Christian schools is because all the peer pressure, the drugs, the fornication, all those things that I mentioned, it's still there. But it's worse. It's worse. And you say, why is it worse? It's because when I was in the public school, I expected wickedness. I expected my friends who are ungodly and unsaved and the people around them, I expected them to be fornicating. I expected them to hate God. I expected them to be worldly. I expected them to take drugs and drink alcohol. I expected all those things. But when I was put into the Christian school, you know what I was expecting? I was expecting, man, I'm going to be amongst believers. I'm going to be amongst brethren. I'm going to be amongst people that love the Lord. I'm going to be amongst people that are trying to serve the Lord. You go to Christian school? The fornication is there. The drugs are there. You know, girls getting pregnant. You know, the, the alcohol. It's all there. It's all there, but it's worse. Because you thought you'd be with believers. At least in the world, you're expecting it. In the Christian school, you're not expecting that. And it can really discourage you in your faith. It can really discourage you and say, man, what's... And look, here's the other thing. The amount of homosexuals that came out of that Christian school, man, it's like every year, you know, fag after fag. You know, and, and he, you know, even the deputy principal, the deputy principal in that school, one day came into school dressed up as a tranny, you know, with his fishnet stockings, his skirt, lipstick, makeup. It was a fundraiser. Apparently, they were trying to raise money Hey, but the deputy principal of a Baptist Christian school came dressed up like a transvestite. That, it would not have happened in the public school. That's what I'm saying, it's worse. It's worse. All right, and what else? I'm trying to think of other things. Oh, my science teacher. My science teacher, a few months ago, tried to add me on Facebook. And guess what? Now he's a tranny. He's a transsexual. And I looked at his Facebook account, and he's got a boyfriend who's a tranny as well. The science teacher of a Christian school. You would think if anybody should fear God, you would think if anybody knew God the Creator, knew the sciences, you know, who understood the, the handiwork of God, you think he would be the one who would at least have the greatest fear of God. Man, that's what's happened. And that teacher used to invite children, kids all the time to his house. You know, to watch Star Wars and Star Trek, all the sci-fi shows. I don't know what it was in his mind, what was going on now. That's a Christian school. Are you sure you want to roll the dice with your kids in a public school or a Christian school? Man. Now, thank God I came through pretty much unscathed. All right. Thank God. But there's many, many children that don't come through unscathed. You know, they get taken. And, and, and look, the, the, the false doctrines that I heard. I mean, I could go on and on about the false doctrines that I learned as well in that school. And that school that I was at was NIV only. Have you guys ever heard of NIV only? You know, if you brought another version of the Bible to the school, you get in trouble. You had to be the NIV. And you know, the, the heroes of the, of the school, of the kids, who were the heroes of the faith? Was it Abraham and Moses? Was it the pastors? Were the missionaries of the world? No, their heroes were the, the rock bands. You know, the rock bands would come in with their Hillsong music, you know, play it up. Oh man, that band, they buy the CDs, talk about it. You know who else were the heroes? The, the Christian, so-called Christian bikies, right? The long hair, the tattoos, the black leather jackets. They come riding on their, on their, on their uh, Harley Davidsons, you know, riding for Jesus Christ. And they were the heroes of the, of the children of the school. 
not the, not the heroes of the faith, you know. That's my experience. I, I could go on and on about my experience about Christian school. All I'm saying is, guys, it's the same as, as the worldly school, but worse. Because you're expecting better. You're expecting these people to have a fear of God. I feel like the public school had a greater fear of God, honestly. That's, that's how I felt. Um, so, let me, uh, let me just also cover this. A, a couple of things uh, that I want to talk about here. I'm almost done now. But uh, I don't want you, if, if you're someone that decides to homeschool, I don't want you to decide to homeschool your kids because you say, well, Pastor Kevin preached a sermon the other day and maybe we should homeschool. Or, you know, uh, this fa- these families in the church, they homeschool, therefore we should homeschool, right? So I've seen families make this wrong decision. They feel pressured somehow. They feel like I need to homeschool because whatever, okay? Now, this will fail you because you're homeschooling for the wrong reasons. You're homeschooling to look better in front of other people or whatever, okay? I'll give you my seven reasons why we homeschool. And I believe every family, whether you homeschool or not, you should make a list of reasons you homeschool your kids. And you make this list, you write it down. Mothers, you put this on a wall somewhere. You put it somewhere where you can go. So when you have those days of tears, when you feel like giving up, when you feel like it's too difficult, you go back to that list and you remind yourself, why do I homeschool my kids? And let me give you seven reasons why my wife and I homeschool our kids. Number one, reason number one, is to protect our children from anti-biblical philosophies. That's reason number one. Number two, to protect our children from predators. Now, there are teachers in schools that are predators, that are looking to take advantage to your children. You say, no, 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 all the teachers in my school are good. Well, there are predators watching your kids as they walk to school back and forth from home. Okay, that happens. How many times do we hear stories where there are predators just watching children go to and from the school system? Protection from predators was number two. Number three, to provide a biblical foundation to my children's education. A biblical foundation. Even if it's just mathematics. Even if it's just teaching our kids 5 plus 5 equals 10. It cannot be 11. Say, why is that? It's because God has put laws in this universe. God does things orderly and decently. You know, we serve an orderly God. We serve a God that has an absolute truth. You know, there's that truth of, of 10. It will never be something else. We have God's word, which is truth. It's nothing else. You know, that's number, number three. Number four, to build a stronger family, to have greater relationships between the siblings and the parents. If I'm just shipping my kids off for hours every day, I'm going to lose opportunities to, to build relationships with those children and even the siblings amongst themselves. Number five, for more time for personal interests or further study. You know, homeschoolers will finish school very quickly, two, three hours maybe, when the other kids are at, at school for six hours. Why? Because they're not wasting time. They're not traveling to and back from school. They don't have these empty times between lessons, right? Uh, where, where the kids, I mean, how many times? Did, I mucked up in school. I interrupted the teachers. I'm sure all of you guys, you go, oh, no, kids, no, you know, I was really good at, no, you mucked up. I know that. Right? <laughs> you sidetracked the teachers several times, didn't you, right? <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> but look, the homeschooling kids, if they muck up, they get the rod, right? <laughs> it gets settled in a few seconds and then you're back to school. All right? I mean, there's, there's more time. What I'm trying to say is there's more time, okay, for personal study. Sometimes my kids, they finish school and they want to, they get excited. They want to do another chapter of math or something. Okay, well, fine. You can move forward if you want. You know, do, do more study or, you know, some of them, they love animals and they'll, they'll, they'll research animals and learn about animals or well, whatever. You know, they might want to play. They might just want to kick the ball around in the backyard. Fine, go and play. You know, you've done your work. Now you've got free time to do whatever you like. Man, that's awesome. You have time to be a child. Even the school system knows homeschooling works. Why? Because after six hours of teaching your kids, they still send your kids with homework. They still send your kids for an hour or two hours of homework because they know it's not enough. They know what we did here in class is not enough. They need to go home and do some homeschooling. Why don't you just do the homeschooling from the beginning? Then, then they don't need to spend those six hours in school. Okay? Even the school system knows uh, homeschooling works. Um, number six, they have the comfort of learning at their own pace. At their own pace. Like I said, if they want to move along faster, they can go faster if they want. If they get stuck on something, they don't understand something, they don't have to have the fear of the class moving on and they're falling behind, hey, they can just revisit that same chapter. There's no one pushing them. There's no pressure. You know, they can go through that chapter, listen to that video, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, whatever uh, resources you're using, and they can move, they can get that settled before they move on. That's so important for subjects like mathematics. You know, not, uh, to, they, can, they have comfort of learning at their own pace. 
And number seven, the seventh reason why you're home homeschooling, and this is my favorite reason, is that life doesn't revolve around school holidays. Life doesn't revolve around school holidays. You know, a lot of, a lot of parents that put their kids in school, in the school system will take their holidays, will take the leave, will look at, okay, when are the kids having school holidays, and they'll work their life around the school holidays. Normally on school holidays, if you go on a holiday, it's really expensive. The accommodation prices go up, you know, everything goes up. Petrol goes up, everything, you know, it's all more expensive. Here's the good thing. You go on holidays when it's, when, it's, when it's not school holidays, everything's cheaper. You get really good discounts. You know, we went to Chile for three months in 2017. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I was putting my kids in school for three months. Our kids were like, you know, we did a lot of schoolwork before going to Chile. All right, now you've got three months. We just had a little bit of work to keep refreshing their minds. Only a few minutes every day. Back, then we got back home. Back to school. You know, get, get back into it, right? You can work around, you know, not the school holidays, but you can work around what your life needs. You know, what your family needs. So what are those seven things? Let me just repeat them very quickly. The reasons I homeschool my kids. And I think these are good things for you guys to think about and maybe add to your list. Number one was protection from anti-biblical philosophies. Number two was protection from predators. Number three, to provide a biblical foundation of their education. Number four, to build a stronger family. Number five, more time for personal interest or further study. Number six, comfort of learning at your own pace. Number seven, life doesn't revolve around school holidays. I really encourage you to make a list like this, homeschooling mothers, because you're going to be tempted sometimes to be like, you know what, this is too hard, I'm going to send my kids to school. But if you've got this list and you look back, oh yeah, that's why I homeschool my kids. That's why I don't want them in that school system. And I think, you know, I, I've shown you how, you know, if you just took the Bible at face value, you wouldn't conclude that what you should do with your kids is put them in some system, some other institution. You know, God did not create the institution of school. He created the institution of government. He created the institution of, of the business, the institution of the church. He created the institution of the family. Did God create the institution of school? No. Bible college? No. None of those things, right? They're, they're the things that God has created is sufficient for us to live by and to train our children. I hope you'd, you'd think about this. If you do have any questions about homeschooling, um, uh, please let me know. Let's pray.